finally figured out what it was because I didn't write movies that went for my. You couldn't put Michael Parks in fucking Chasing Amy, you know. No, no. <laughs> it'd have been it'd have been weird. But, uh, but this movie could absolutely put him in, and I finally found something. Oh, that is cool, man. Drop him into, but the, the, can I tell you a quick story about um, sure. uh, casting did. Swear. So I was trying to tell, explain to my wife. She's like, who's going to play that part? And I was like, this dude, Michael Parks. And she's like, who is he? And I was trying to explain it. And I was like, let me just show you some Dust Till Dawn. And I bring the, the DVD in, into uh, my room. i got this big 103-inch television player. Uh, television player. I sound like I'm from the fifth. Television <laughs> player. <laughs> I, watch my, I watch my television. stories on it. <laughs> so I've got a big Blu-ray player attached to it as well. Pop the DVD in, and so basically you're watching a cinema-like presentation of From Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> and so we watch the first ten minutes and shit, and I, you know, I turn it up because I like my shit loud. Um, <laughs> and so uh, after it's that, after I pause it because the kid comes in the room, Harley, and um, you know the movie's a little grown up and shit. So I pause it, don't want her to see it, and uh, we were like, "What's up?" And she's like, "The the police are outside." <laughs> and I said, "What?" And I look out the window, and I see a cop is talking to uh, Raina, uh, our housekeeper. And so I go downstairs, but before I go downstairs, I get I I, I kind of go over to Jen. I'm like, "What should we do?" And she's like, "What do you mean? They probably have nothing to do with us." I said, "They're talking to Raina." And I look back at the window, and Raina points, and the cop looks up at me, and I wave at him because I don't know what else to do. And he goes, "Do you live here?" I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "Get down here right now, get down here." And I said, "Okay." And we had just had some Baja Fresh delivered. And I felt weird. I felt scared because, you know, as, I, I, as we all know, I like to imbibe in this house from time to time. Uh -huh. So suddenly I was like, what's going to, and I had just imbibed fairly recently. I said, what's <laughs> going to make me look the most low-key and casual? And I grabbed a container of Baja Fresh Chicken with, uh, if that, that I just bought and took it downstairs with me. Opened the door, and the, the cops do that thing where they take one step backwards, put one hand on their hip and one hand extended forward. <laughs> Holy shit, what the and there's fuck? Two, two of them at the door, and I'm in the doorway, and it's my kid behind me, and she had two friends over, and my wife's behind me. And I just saw Raina as I was coming to the door. I was like, Raina, what did the police want? She's like, oh, I don't know, Mr. Kevin, everything's okay. She doesn't speak much English. So I was just <laughs> like, all right, open the door. Cops, hands on hips and shit. My kid goes all wide-eyed, and the cop goes, how many people are in this house? And I go, uh, like, I didn't know I was going to have to do math that quickly. So I was just like, well, it's me, this one, this one. I said, there's about six. He goes, Dude, why don't you step outside? I need you to step outside right now. I was like, okay. And I'm still holding the chicken. He's like, what's that? I was like, chicken. And he goes, what's, go what's going on? Who's in this house? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, we got a call um, from somebody, uh, some neighbor or something said that there were screams for help coming from inside the house. Oh, <laughs> man. And I go, I, I, I go I don't, honestly, I have no idea what you're talking about. I said, we're the only ones here. I said, my, my friends, uh, my kids' friends are over. I said, me and the wife, we're just about to have some Baja Fresh. As you can see, I'm holding chicken right here. <laughs> As you can and see. He goes, uh, and then one of the other policemen goes like, no, 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 it wasn't a neighbor. Somebody walking down the hill called it in. And the guy goes, oh, because at first, at first they were implying that the call was coming from inside the house. And I was like, wow, this is like when a stranger called. <laughs> yeah, no uh, shit. But uh, I was like, somebody walking down the hill. He's like, yeah, they said that somebody was crying for help out the windows. Um, and, and my kid is, like, breaking down at this point, man. She just starts, like, getting sobby and shit. Oh, because man. she's never seen anything like this. It's yeah. Funny. It's just like the police are like, get out of your house, little kid. And and the whole time, like, she's upset for one reason. I'm upset for another reason because I'm like, did I leave a joint upstairs in that ass? <laughs> so uh, they're coming into the house to kind of look around because of this phone call they got. And I go, officer, wait, by any chance, um, are you guys here looking for the Gecko Brothers? <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? I was like, I got a 103-inch television upstairs, man. And I was just playing the opening scene from, from dusk till dawn. That, too, is kind of a hostage situation. There's a lot of screaming. Um, and the cop, he was older, he looks to the younger cop, he's like, is this true? And the younger cop goes, yeah, it was the best part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, uh, he goes, all right, well, uh, let me just take a look inside. And they walked into the house and looked around a little bit, and they were like, okay, everything seems to check out. And I was like, thanks, thanks so much, man, thank you. And, and, and you know, he was, I was like, I, I, he was like, I'm sorry we bothered you, I'm sorry. Like, I said, dude, if that's your response to something like that, I'm more than happy to, to you know, be involved. You guys were great. Uh, and now I feel super safe if, if something ever does happen. You never have to apologize about coming in here. And so they left, and I closed the door, and, and my wife is looking at me with wide, wide fucking eyes, and she's kind of breathing heavily now, and I'm like, so, yeah, that's Michael Parks who's going to be in, in our movie. It'd <laughs> <laughs> be funny. Cut to later. All the cops are sitting there with, eating chicken with them watching the whole film. <laughs> <laughs> they stayed outside for like five minutes, though, man. Like, they, 
you know, they were like, well, we kind of believe what he says. It was, I liked the fact that they came in the house because for all they knew, there's somebody standing behind the door with my kid with a gun to their head. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then they so, leave. You know, they were like, they didn't, they didn't buy my whole, like, they started, like, getting in my kid's face. Not in their face, like, yelling at her, but they were just like, um, what's your name, honey? Who lives here? Who lives here? And I was like, that's my daughter. I was like, I'm not asking her. I'm not asking you, sir. I'm asking her. Because they want to make sure that I'm not, like, I answer the door in a robe. I'm carrying a fucking fistful of chicken. You're not the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, I could be the dude that was in there being, hey, everybody, this is my house now. Like, in <laughs> By the way, how is the Baja Fresh Chicken? <laughs> Kev, how is that Baja Fresh Chicken? That Baja Fresh Chicken is amazing, Kevin. Uh, it's worth the facing down the cops for. <laughs> yes, with their hands on their hips and their front hand out. Hey, man, can I pitch a, a gig real quick? Sure. Please do. I'm doing a gig that I've always wanted to do because I live I grew up on the East Coast and shit, and I've always heard of this place and never got to uh, even go there, let alone play there. I'm going to the Westbury Music Fair. Oh, wow. Oh, on Long Island. They probably oh. don't even call it that anymore. No, it's um, like it went through eight bank names, yeah. Yeah. and I don't know what it's called right now. It's the theater in Westbury, maybe. I'm not quite sure. But it's called Eastbury now. Like, <laughs> every talk commercial, they would be like, and the Westbury Music Fair. And it just sounded so celebratory. It sounded like a Renaissance Fair. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> um, I'm finally uh, playing there, man. I'm, I'm going there two weeks from uh, Sunday. I think it's December 5th. What are you doing there? That's going to be I'm huge. I'm just doing that Q&A shit that I do, stand up and talk to people for a while. You will you will absolutely sell that room out. It's a yeah. theater in the round. I don't know. Right now I'm at half capacity. I think I'm at like uh, less than half. I think I'm at 600. So yeah, but don't forget, it's a weird, this is a weird holiday. Uh, uh, the Long Islanders, they, the last minute motherfuckers. Yeah, you'll so do great there. there. Some so of them yeah, will come we'll after your show. Buy these tickets, folks. I want to go to this thing. I can't. If it, I, I want to make sure it happens, man. It's always been. Do they have a? Does the stage turn? Yeah, it's it's in, yeah. in the round kind so of I'm a thing. Get like a workout while I'm actually doing my shit. No, you can like just stand there. Either you get a workout or you get dizzy. One or the other. You got to either keep your focal really point and and then get dizzy and just pass out. On yeah, the stage and shit. yeah. That's pretty much it. Uh, what we call the Peter Finch. <laughs> Be, uh, before we let you go, I want to talk about the uh, Smodcast. It's yeah. uh, Saturday, 2 p.m., uh, episode 145. It's Twin Pines Mall Rats. We're doing a whole, yeah, we did it. They're running on, on um, uh, XM this weekend. They're running the episode of Smodcast that we put up last week, and it's pretty much all about Back to the Future and Michael J. Fox. So you'll Back to the Future. Them. I know. Me, me and Danny did a uh, Back to the Future show once uh, a while ago. We, we actually had people sync it up. We played it and commented on everything, sort That's of a awesome. mystery science theater. Yeah, it was kind of like doing a live riff tracks. Yeah. That's awesome. It, uh, uh, we, we mostly it was cool. did, like, fucking Doc Brown, like, Ma Marty responding to the asshole line. That's what we became obsessed with. When he's just like, what, have my kids become assholes? Assholes? And then instead of going back in time, he's just like, well, you're a doctor. Give her an abortion. <laughs> hey, Kevin, let me, if I could ask you. Okay. Asshole kids, Doc. Get your hands in there. I, I got to apologize for not hearing uh, the Smodcast that you did of the Back to the Future, but is there any talk about how Doc is just basically a lunatic? Like, he's a madman with a suicide plan? No, but but that's kind of it. I mean, why talk about that? That's part of the plot. <laughs> a, yeah, a lot of the uh, yeah, right. A, a lot of the uh, shit coming up since it's the 25th anniversary, and they've been doing so much. 25th, right? Yeah, yeah. They've been doing so much uh, publicity with it, re-releasing the movie and everything. Uh, a, a lot of people have come up with these new theories that um, I don't know what to make of them. One was that Doc Brown. Uh, at the be very beginning of the movie, knew exactly what was going to happen the whole fucking time. Yeah. Like, he already had the vest on. He knew Marty was going to go and take the car from the... the, no, the but he didn't, yeah, but the he didn't know that yet. He didn't have, but he didn't have the vest on in the beginning of the movie. No. He had the vest on after all the events happened, so he would have that knowledge after Marty would write the letter. Right? Yeah, but wouldn't so the, he... In the beginning of the movie, no vest. End of the movie, he does have the no, vest. No, 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 he didn't. I'll tell you why. Right. Because... Tell me, Danny. Because... Uh, that universe no longer exists. Yeah, but in that universe, Doc Brown died. He was shot dead. Yeah, in that universe. See, Marty changes. He cha it's, it's that whole tangent universe thing. Like, like they, they might as well be living in a tangent 1985. Don't you get stuck it just in worked a out. paradox loop, though, where it, it happened before? It's just, we, didn't, we didn't see the beginning of the movie. We just saw a, like a middle point in what would just keep going and going. Yeah, like that, it's kind of like the the, the the architect scene in the Matrix. This is all right. happened, kind of like it, it's happened a zillion times of all these variations. Sooner or later, Marty gets to a white room where a dude clicking a pen <laughs> and is just like, "You fucked up again. You're oh. supposed to fuck your mother. Now go back and do it." Uh, but now I could shoot that theory <laughs> shit. It wouldn't have been the Twin Pines Mall then. 
It, it would be what? The Lone Pine? It would have been Lone Pine. Right. If he would have went through all that shit he went through. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, let me see. No, that, well, that makes sense. Ah. That makes sense. Ah. Lone Pine. Lone Pine. And when he comes back, isn't it Lone Pine Mall? When he yeah, comes back. Yeah. Yeah. I hate this fucking movie. <laughs> I Jimmy, fucking hate Jimmy Back to the Future. Jimmy cannot stand it. I'm still more interested in the fact that uh, Doc says, uh, if my calculations are correct, then when this baby hits 88 miles an hour, you can see some serious shit, because then he then grabs Michael J. Fox, Marty, and he's not sure if this thing is going to happen or not. So he's basically, And he knows that he just stole plutonium from a bunch of t a Libyan terrorists that are coming to get him. So he knows that he's going to bounce to, to the, either the future or the past, wherever he wants to go, if it does work. Yeah. But if it doesn't work, he knows that he has Libyan terrorists coming to kill him. So to clean up his little mess that he's made, he figures that he'll commit suicide and drag Marty and the dog into it, so that way no one's left. So he gets hit by the DeLorean if it didn't disappear. Exactly. And, it's just a mess of meat. And Marty does. It's dead. It's on video. And no one understands why. Because <laughs> at least he doesn't get killed you know, from a rocket launcher or, you know, shot by terrorists. Yeah, Kevin Neal will be at the Stress Factory tonight <laughs> and tomorrow. Two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. The great Kevin Neal. And 732-545-HA-HA. Uh, yes. For yes. tickets uh, in New Brunswick there, you can get there from the city. It's Absolutely. very easy. The great Kevin Nealon. And, of course, Kevin Smith. Uh, what's the new movie, Kevin? Uh, Red State. We hope to debut it at Sundance in January. Uh, that sounds fucking but, uh, great, man. Him, Michael I'll Parks. Be, I'll and bring the teaser for it. The, 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 we've been putting up a podcast for it on the Smodcast.com network. Red is, and, Red uh, is you good. Can listen, you can listen to the teaser, but I'm bringing the teaser with me to the Westbury show, so we'll show it there as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Red, Red, Red is good to have in the title of a movie because Reds did well, and then Red just recently... Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, of course. Yeah, they always do great. Yeah, I good colors. <laughs> good color for a title. I have to piss. All right, uh, we'll take a break. Kevin Smith, thank you so much for uh, calling in. Kevin Nealon, thank thanks you guys. for popping in. A lot of fun, and uh, we'll be right back. See you soon. Sirius XM, the virus. This is the OBN.